Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me once again. I am so grateful that you know you guys are always tuning in on this Sunday, beautiful Sunday. Happy Sunday, my people. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Money Talk series. Today I have an amazing guest. We're gonna get started right away. What would you do if there's nothing else that you can do? What would you do if you've come to the end of your rope? What would you do if the destiny, your destiny and the destiny of your kids are in your hands? What would you do if you come to the end of your rope? So that's why we have our guest on today, because this is a woman that has been there, done that, turned her own destiny around, even after losing everything, rebuilt and so on. So I am so happy, so, so happy to have my guest today. Her name is Ijo Maudukwe, but we all call her Mama Ologi because, hey, she's applying us, Ogi, you know, daytime, nighttime, nighttime, and overtime. <laughs> and supplying our babies with Ogi. So I'm so, so happy, so honored to have you with me on the show today. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. Please help me welcome my guest, my mother in the Lord. You know, I call everybody my mother. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm just going to get started. Um, please introduce yourself briefly for those who may not know you. And just get into the very first question, which is, how did you know that, you know what, at this point in time, I have to take matters in my hands? my destiny, the destiny of my kids, I have to step up and do something. Let's get started from that. Okay, so first of all, thank you Adiola for having me, right? Quite interestingly, it was about three years ago, I know that someone reached out to me and said, Adiola had you on her channel. I mean, whoever this Adiola is, if you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I mean, for someone who didn't know me and told my story, and um, today, three years later, we're here. Uh, so first, thanks for that, and thanks for sharing, you know, my story with your community. So my name is Ijoma Ndukwe. You can hear me loud and clear, right? My audio? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Okay, so my name is Ijoma Ndukwe, popularly known as Wanya Kamu, right? Um, or Iyaologi right? Just simply the global pub seller. And um, I'm the CEO of Bubes Foods and the lead, you know, business, um, business growth strategist at Live to Limitless Global. Now to your question, Adiola. Um, when did I know that it was time? So I had to quickly find a scripture before coming on this live. But I'm just, I'm, I'm a Christian, right? So everything I do is faith-based, if you get what I'm trying to say. So this was the scripture that came to my mind, and I'm just going to share that and then build on it. It is actually Gen uh, Genesis chapter 27 and verse 40, right? So, but where I want to focus on, it says, you would live by your sword, and you will serve your brother, right? But the part I'm focused on tonight is, but when you decide to break free, you will shake his yoke from your neck. So what we'll see mm. from that scripture is about decision. So Ichoma, at what point did you know that enough is enough and it's time to make a change? Um, honestly, it's happened at different points in my life, but it's really at those times when I do you know, when I get to my lowest and then I have to make a decision, right? It's a case of, do you want to stay a victim of your experiences, whatever those experiences may be, or do you want to rise above them and not play the victim, you know, victim card of whatever life has dealt you? Um, so the very first time for me was, I was doing this other retail business, right? And every other month, as the case may be, I was in Europe um, selling your shoes and bags, you know, your designer brand items. And I didn't understand the basics of running a profitable business. And that business hits up. I wasn't finding fulfillment, to be honest. I wasn't earning the kind of money I wanted to earn from that business, right? And I knew that something had to give. Now, I went to God in prayer. And that's not to say that I didn't do other things prior. 
But I did go to God in prayer because that's all I know to do really and truly. And I was asking, what is the way out, right? And that's where the pap came. So that was my first enough is enough, if you get what I'm trying to say. But it's been building. That's the funny thing about life. You know, when in, in the Christian faith, it's almost like when we say um, new levels, new devils, it's almost as though, <laughs> you know, it keeps going and it, it keeps increasing in tempo. So the next enough is enough for me was my marriage had packed up and I had three children under seven um, and I didn't have a spouse anymore and I didn't have spousal support at that time. And it meant that I needed to find a way to make things happen for me and my children. Um, I didn't I didn't want my kids. I didn't want my kids to suffer. I didn't want my kids to lack because it was quite, it was quite tough. It was, I remember, you know, so we're talking 2014 now, by this time this was early 2014. I remember that there was this time I was late on my rent and we were locked out of the house. <laughs> you know, I remember that also for a few days, my kids couldn't go to school, you know, cause I couldn't pay the fees. And you know, just generally feeding was a struggle. Doing things was just a struggle. And I just said enough is enough. So that was a decision of, Ichama, things have to change. Um, so maybe that's the most defining until my very recent enough is enough again. But maybe I'll just leave it at that for now. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. I think sometimes in life, people find themselves in what I would call embarrassing situations. Mm -hmm. And instead of using that to fuel your passion, for a change mm -hmm. or your mm -hmm. desire for this mm -hmm. not to happen to you again. Sometimes people take offense. If you're watching me today, or if you're watching us today, I should say, and you're tired of being tired, please learn from this woman. She said something very important that she didn't want to have a victim's mentality. Mm -hmm. If you get yourself into a situation, you have to get yourself out of situation. Stop waiting for someone to rescue you basically I, like i just feel like if you don't get anything else out of this broadcast today is the fact that at some point you have to get to the point where you have to get up and say you know what i have to do something about my situation if you're tired of borrowing money from people if you're tired of not being able to pay your rent on time if you're not happy with this the school your kids are going through if you're not happy with where you live like whatever the situation is if it's tight to, to pay rent or buy food just think about what you can do like we have to get to the point where we're not blaming everybody else we actually take matters in our hands and honestly that is why i admire you the most because you got to the point where you were like you know what i have to do something about this so Personally, I think that's um, my most inspiring thing about you. So thank you so much <laughs> for deciding enough is enough and for doing something about it. Now, um, I wanted to know, like a lot of people would want to know how important it is to have a dream life, like, you know, a dream for your life or a vision for your life mm -hmm. or for your children if you have kids how important it is to have like a dream or a vision for your life? Um, actually, uh, I think, right? And for the longest of times, to the point that I wrote a book in 2017, right? So this is six years um, ago, where I said, your dream is your seed. And to be honest, at that time, it wasn't even as clear as it is to me now, there's something I also would say that clarity comes in motion. So a lot of times, you know, something you talked about, which is not blaming everybody else, right? To make progress in life, you need to hold yourself accountable. To be a great leader, you need to take responsibility, you know, a thousand and one percent responsibility for the things that you have control over, right? Don't worry about the ones that you have no control over. I mean, that's what it is. So, you don't have any control around maybe your some of your experiences or your experiences because it's happened already, but you do have some bit of control over your future. 
And you've talked about, you've given certain instances. So it could be anything from, and because this is a money series, and for me, really, it's all about money, right? Um, it would be the things that money can do for you as opposed to, oh, just earning money for the sake of money itself. So I believe that I don't have, my marriage has failed, for example, right? So there's not so much I may be able to, and I use the word may because everything is conditional, to be honest with you, right? There may, there may not be a lot I can do about it, but there is so much more that I can do about my future. So, and your future, which is your dream, you know, in this instance, you can create it, you can design it, and then you can begin to go for it. So that is something that would give you hope. The Bible talks about, you know, the expectations of the righteous, you know, so your dream life is something that you're expecting to manifest. And that expectation is what then keeps you going. So, and your question is, how is it, you know, how important is it? So first, I believe that to start, you need to dream. For me, when I started, and I'm going to link that, I mean, very practical, right? When I started the business, I had the idea to sell pap. And it was the idea, but then there was a dream attached to that idea. And the dream was simple. How do I get, I imagined at the time. Now, this was 12, over a decade ago, because it was, it was 2012. August 2012. I remember imagining at the time. So imagine me broke, right? And imagine that if 1 million people can buy this product of mine and I make a profit of 10 naira on each product, that would be 10 million naira. <laughs> that dream was enough to get me up and going. So I started with an idea a dream and less than a dollar. Have I hit challenges? My goodness. <laughs> Along the way, I think that starting a business is the, would it, generating an idea is the easiest part of starting a business. But then going along and seeing this dream come to fruition is quite challenging and almost overwhelming but what then happens is that that dream so for me irrespective of whatever happened along the way the dream that there is a possibility that i could earn 10 million naira in profit <laughs> that was enough to keep me going and then this dream of 10 million naira in profit was more around what i could do with the 10 million so this is me at that time, when I started, my marriage was still intact. So I wasn't thinking in terms of, well, I was just by my children. But I strongly believe in partnership in marriage. I believe so much in supporting. I believe that's what I believe in. So I could just imagine what, what kind of life this would offer the family. I, I could imagine, you know, maybe the vacations. But I didn't think that far at the time. So that's how I started, based on that dream. And that's what kept me going. So I didn't set up or set off to start to get the NAVDAC registration or the FDA or whatever it is, right? It was simply the dream that was then um, navigating every step that I took. Because that dream of putting my product in, in the hands of a million people then made me start thinking, how do I, how do I, so how do I pack this product? in a way that it will be on the shelves and 1 million people can see it. How do I? And honestly, at the time, I wasn't thinking that there would be, you know, local market, right? Don't forget that this is me. I make my pap at home. I grew up, my mom made our pap at home. So I didn't know that I would have, you know, that, that much clientele in the local market. So my whole vision was Africans in diaspora. So first think, it, so you see what I'm saying? It's all about the dream. The dream to then put this um, product on the shelves in the US, UK, whatever my dream was, then led me to the kind of packaging, then led me to the kind of factory that I built, then led me to the kind of structure that I wanted to put it around the business, the kind of branding. Everything was just centered around the dream. So this is... Um, in regards with starting. And then maybe by your next question, you know, I would be able to also talk about the importance of dreaming, you know, in scaling the business to profits.
please go ahead. Talk about okay, it. Fantastic. fantastic. So I started based on that dream. And then fast forward to the COVID season. So I shared that my first enough is enough was me being broke and not having enough. And then, you know, which led me to starting the food processing business. Then my second enough is enough happened with the COVID. <laughs> and, you know, when you said, when you were speaking earlier, you talked about the fact that you want to learn so that certain things don't happen again. But I think that also, you know, maybe my Christian background has made me realize that HMI, it wasn't necessarily, it could have been avoided, yes, right? Um, but then, if you then understand the scriptures, and, and you know, <laughs> I don't know how to really speak without reference to the scriptures, you know, um, that's really from where I draw all of my inspiration and everything that I do. So, if you then look at the experience I had with the COVID, what happened? I knew it was time to skill. I knew it was time to get to the next level. So early 2019, with this dream, there was another dream that I have, which even hasn't manifested. You know what I'm trying to say? So I had this dream and I kept asking this question. And I kept saying, but there must be a way to do this product in this way. There must be a way to do this product in this manner. And I had that question talking at me for, say, three, four years. And then I went on to the US to do the first research and development right on the equipment that could bring this dream to reality and i'm telling you so this was 2019 this is four years later and i haven't still manifested it right but what then happened was i mean we i paid ten thousand dollars for that test alone to research some equipment that could achieve what what i'm dreaming of and what i'm thinking of so even in, a, in what you would call our giant strides in the business, right, is still hinged on the dream that I have for where we are going. We did that first test and it took, it took them two days to get the result of the test. And I felt so proud of myself that something I was thinking about, something I was dreaming of, I could see that new product in my hands right and then three months down the line i went on to denmark to carry out the second research and development you know what you would call r d again and this time this cost us ten thousand four hundred euro now and we're still talking about the importance of dreaming beyond the importance of dreaming is do you really believe in these dreams that you have the confidence to then go after these dreams so what you will then see happening at these times was I believed so much in the dream, you know, like the book, um, what's this book now by Napoleon Hill, which talks about burning desire, right? And that desire, like I read out of that scripture, Genesis 27, really that decision, you know, has to be, you know, has to then be burning on the inside of you. Like when you, when I would say, or when you would hear people say, how badly do you want it? We all desire a good life. We all desire, you know, better homes. We all have this, you know, these desires and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's also that phrase that says, if wishes were horses, even beggars will ride, if you get what I'm trying to say. So th these things are not waiting to fall on your lap, even though we all believe, you know, the Rhonda Bynes um, book, The Secret, if you get what I'm trying to say and how, you know, the universe will bring it to you and that is quite an interesting interesting principle and phenomenon and i'm not here to discuss that but this burning desire would then lead to action and i think that that's what i'm saying so the burning desires around the dreams that i had i had and i have for this business led to all of these things so you can imagine that at this time the r d was successful the one in denmark was successful it was about the third one and i thought it is time to scale and bring this new product you know to life to manifestation to reality so my teaching methodology in live to limitless global you know which is a coaching business that i have is dream act and manifest so i treat i teach with the damn methodology so i believe in the power of dreaming and I, then i think and i say and i believe that your dreams will then guide your actions and of course you then manifest your dream life so it's almost like it's a 360 degree kind of thing happening from dream to action to manifestation of your dreams right d-a-m so by this time i was so sure that okay this is it we engaged some financial advisors in new york and you know made all that payment you know things were moving and you know what i'm trying to say uh, we had interested investors and all of that and I 
would I say I was a bit impatient? Maybe I was a bit impatient because then again, life is about perspectives. How do you want to see, you know, the things that has happened? You know, so I could say that I was a bit impatient or I could just say, you know, I wanted to make my dreams happen, period. And if it worked, it would have just been one of those success stories without the attendant issues. But it happened in the way that it happened. So in wanting to bring this dream to reality, the finance guys, you know, were working on this thing. We were talking to um, different um, kind of interests, right? And we were trying to raise $5 million at a time. So you can imagine, you know, this this dream that started with less than a do less than a dollar. Right, we were then talking five million dollars in, you know, investment. We had prepared our pitch deck. Everything was on point. We prepared valuation. Everything was on point. We were talking. Um, the last um conversation that wasn't even, the last conversation we had before the COVID, was with some you know um, foods foods funds that was coming in through South Africa. We were having this meeting. You know, you're talking about term sheets for the guys who are in finance and and you know investment banking. They will understand. So. I was so sure that things were almost there and i went on to do crowdfunding and by my permutations and what i was thinking was you know what i mean we're trying to raise five million dollars and it's going to work because i believe that my dreams are valid so if i'm able to then raise some kind of bridge finance you know to 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 get going so that once the this five million dollars comes through we then pay off and you know so i had my i had my strategy in place <laughs> when i introduced myself earlier i introduced myself as the you know lead business growth strategist at live to limitless global right so i'm more a strategy person i had everything i thought i was so sure that i had it under wraps and i had all my ducks in a row as they would say but of course i didn't know that COVID was going to happen nobody knew that COVID was going to happen either nobody knew the extent you know, of the pandemic and how, how it was going to blow. So at this time, I had people's funds, people's money, and the whole COVID thing has started to come in. I made a quick trip, you know, outside of the country. You know, it was supposed to just be a 10 days um, trip. And um, airspaces were then shot. <laughs> so that 10 days trip became five months outside home, outside business, without my children, you know, just stuck outside of Nigeria. And business had to shut down. And quite interestingly, you know, um, in the pandemic, the people in the service industry, especially the food business, were allowed to trade and do business, meaning that we could have still been doing business. However, on, at that time, our product was still in the frozen state. And part of the things that we were we had you know, tried to do at the time was how to, you know, sell the powdered product. So we had paid for the equipment, but then we covered things could move and all that. And we had this particular, you know, we had this particular equipment in storage for 16 months. So business came to a halt. People were calling for my neck, as you would say in local parlance. I was dragged blue black on social media. And now, you know, it was, to be honest, and still is my most dreadful moment in life. I, the anxieties that I felt in that season, you can't explain it. Only the people who experienced me in that season would understand what I went through. Like I would have palpitations, I would have anxiety attacks. I would be up all night, you know, because I'm thinking this is my integrity at stake. This is the whole, hey, Jama, where is you and your God and God is leading you and God is the one scaling this business. Okay, so how about that? If you get what I'm trying to say. So we're talking challenges because it's good to talk about the successes and then nobody really talks about their dark moments. It was the darkest, darkest, darkest season of my life. But where am I going with that conversation? Hey, Chama, what got you to also go back to rebuild? I still got to a point, you know, of course, we were repaying this money out of pocket until, you know, I mean, it, it dried up. Don't forget that income wasn't coming in and we we're paying out of what we had. And we just got to a point where it was like, listen, you've hit a wall again. So pause, take that decision and go back and rebuild. So even in okay, sorry, sorry, let me interrupt you. I, before you tell us how you got out of that one, I just yeah. wanted to, because a number of people have joined us. 
Once again, okay. if you're just joining us, my guest today is Ijoma Odukwe. She is the founder of Bube's Foods. Uh, this woman, she told her story at the beginning. I've talked about her on my show before. She reached her lowest point where she had no income and she had three kids and a single mom. And then she opened her fridge one day, saw a kambogi pop and thought, why don't I make this for my friends? I can start making money. She started doing that, made a car on the side at that time. Gradually, with 200 Naira, she started with 200 Naira. Gradually, um, she started her factory in Nigeria. And now she supplies, you supply the whole of Nigeria, right? Bouvet's, yes, we, we find your yes. pop? <laughs> yes, yes so much, but but I would also say something at that, you know. So what had go ahead. Not yes, just Nigeria, the US as well. Um yes, we pulled. As, yes, but we, the, but US. the rebuilding season. So I'm just going to wait for you to be done with your intro. And I'll also tell what I did differently, you know, in the rebuilding phase. So let me allow you to, you know, um roll oh, with okay. And as a matter of fact, this is one of her videos showing us her food. You put your hand, go walk. <laughs> your name go up and down. You said go be a boss. Amen. Oh my Amen. goodness. Everything you put your hand, go walk. Your name go up and down. You... Okay, I don't have copyright to that song, so I don't want them to flag me. Yeah, but this that's... is one of the stores in Maryland, USA, yeah. selling her pop that she started in her kitchen with 200 naira she took charge of her life she stopped waiting for anyone to save her or dash her money she's like what can i do and she had a vision for her life and today she's leaving that vision for her life and she also changed the destiny of her kids so that's for those who are just joining us because some people have been asking in the comment section who are we talking to today and that's why we have her here today to inspire us uh just so you know we have people watching us from different parts of the world this is aaron from the uk this is emmanuel from Sierra Leone. this is lamba from nigeria this is masha from jamaica so and this is um school of money book from sokoto i just want you to know people are greeting you from different parts of the world and the reason I did that intro again is because Kofi and a number of other people are asking what's going on here today, who are we talking to? I do have some questions from some people, but I'm going to open up for people to join us very soon so they can ask their own questions. Um, peace is just giving you compliment that you are indeed a strong woman to, you know, get up and try to, you know, make your own destiny really uh and for for peace who asked how did you get supported financially we just talked about it she started with 200 naira she didn't start out raising money she started with what she had in her fridge and 200 naira too so that was how she started so you're already answering my next question which is you know you talking about some of the challenges she started about a decade ago and then she hit another challenge when COVID happened. This is for those wondering why she's talking about COVID. The business was established and then she was trying to scale during COVID and then after raising funds, COVID happened. So tell us how you were able to get out of that and um, yeah. to where you are today. Okay, Ajola. So it, it all even my rebuilding was still about a dream because i mean i still haven't put the products in the hands of a million people so why do you want to stop you know so um even this morning you know when i opened my bible this morning so i had read that part i think two two days ago but i opened it again today you know when moses stopped at sinai for those who are christians and it just hit me and god said to him get up and keep moving you know you haven't gotten to the promised land so this morning again i realized that wait a minute Ichoma, this is god because i read my scripture it's for me it's not i'm not a pastor I'm, I'm not reading it for somebody else it's how do i apply this thing so what i wrote down this morning in my journal is simple Ichoma, you have not reached the promised land so you can't stop right so i hadn't um 
reach the dream of putting my product in the hands of a million people why would i stop now i needed to at this point needed to prove that my dreams are valid and i went back to rebuild again because it's about anything that's worked before can work again so i went back to rebuild again based on the dream based on the vision my vision is very clear clearly written so even when i teach business i teach from the place of dreaming and um so i went back and my for me it was all about how do i sell even one tub again how do i sell even one tub of pap again and for the people i see that someone is you know tuning in from jamaica pap is actually you know um a fermented grain cereal porridge, mostly taken um, as a breakfast cereal or weaning meal for babies, but it's actually very healthy because it's natural. You know, you should you should get it all the way in, in Jamaica, right? So that was how I went back to rebuilding. And the thing about life is that the moment you take one step forward, the other door opens. So I went to do that and as much as I want to say the rest as they say is history, it's not really the rest as they say is history, right? But I also don't want to bore us, but I can tell you detail by detail. I then had, at this time, I told us about the equipment with, which we had, which was locked up for 16 months. Of course, we set it up, and which is what, you know, that product that Ajola showed. What I did was I made sure I brought a pack. <laughs> I brought a pack, you know, to show what we're talking about. So this is the powder pack. And um, and it kind of blew up, right? And don't forget that pre-COVID, we had done a full 20-foot container all the way to Houston. And what I didn't even tell you about the challenge was that all the things that happened on the sea, the product got there two months before the best before data, Jola. And I couldn't sell. And that was another thirty-five thousand dollars, <laughs> literally down the drain. Not a dollar came back with me. But when I still talk about perspectives, what did I do? It was two things. It's either I I start to cry and salt because you must have a limitless wealth creation mindset, and that's what I really teach. You know, the mindset of abundance, because Christ said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. I don't know that he said we're not going to meet challenges, right? So rather than cry and sulk over the fact that, okay, you can imagine what it means to produce and process a whole 20-foot container of pap. He went in a reefer container, and a reefer container is temperature controlled if you get what I'm trying to say. And he got there, and he had some kind of fanfare around it, simply because at that time, the government also tried to export yam right in a temperature control controlled container that didn't by the time the yam got to america the yam was bad so you can imagine that you know these boobers foods here had then done the same thing and it got there in one piece only that it got there two months before birth before date what did i do i flew back to houston i stood in the stores with each pallet and what was i doing please give this to everybody who comes into the store to buy something i just converted that into a marketing cost as opposed to looking at it as a loss. Mm -hmm. Now, what that happened, what that then did for the business was that post-COVID, when we came back into business, it meant we had a ready buyer already. So it's one of those stores, it's a it's a chain of eight stores, I think. So from Houston, Arlington, Dallas, Maryland, and wherever else, Garland, right? That singular action is what has what then built this relationship that is now selling this product and we have some other stores as well in the us where we have this product now back to what you were saying you know that you can get the product across the nation in rebuilding i started to look at profits because i asked myself why did this whole COVID thing hit you so badly in the way that it hit you and i came to the simple conclusion that the business was not generating enough profits to be able to you know um pay back its debts and do the things that he needed to do to scale. So it was a profitability issue, not necessarily a revenue question and all of that. And each your mind, what were the things that were affecting your profitability? It was things like we were in over, we were in over a hundred stores in Nigeria. Factory was in Abuja, we had a retail um, outlet in, in Lagos, we had in Port Harcourt in South, South Nigeria, but you supply these stores right and you have all those interesting um sales terms so it sales on return you sometimes you're supplying a store because you know you want that visibility as a new business right but you finish selling my product you give me a second invoice i'm trying to fulfill and then you forget that i'm using money to fulfill these things 
right? So it means that we also had cash flow issues in the business. So in this rebuilding phase, once I got back, what I did was to reinvent the business and reinvent the business model. And I stopped focusing on how many stores can you see us in rather than what is our bottom line as a business? And that's what I was trying to say at that time. So what we now do is we do our export. We do our corporate organizations. The Ramadan season is actually like our biggest, biggest, you know, sales period, because we also would brand for corporate organizations and all of that. Right. So I just reinvented our business model and then we do retail. So we, we do, you know, home, home deliveries, if you get what I'm trying to say. So, that's what we did and that's what has turned the business profitable in this our rebuilding phase but it all still falls back to the dreaming and what i say to people is that we haven't even started yet to be honest with you and this is not me being humble this is me telling it as as is because we haven't started <laughs> we haven't started ajola <laughs> Wow, thank you so much. That was quite inspiring. I'm going to allow people to join us in the studio. I'm posting a link for you to join us in the studio. So please, if you have any questions for my guests, please click this link. Please click the link. Join us. Or you can copy it and you know put it in your browser. Um, so first of all, I think for people that are listening in today. The most important thing is having a vision. And you mentioned it a couple of times that it has to be written. I think a lot of people have things in their mind or at the back of their head, but they have not actually sat down to write it out. I think that's the first thing you have to do. And you know, I've talked about this on my show before about having a, a vision board for your life. You have to take yourself seriously enough to write down what it is that you're hoping for aspiring to be. Um, so if you don't get anything out of what we've been talking about so far, is the fact that she wrote down a lot of what she's saying today, a lot of what, what happened today. So please and please make sure that you write down uh, your visions. A number of people joined us from Maryland and they're asking the location of, your, of the store that has your product. If you don't it's, mind. Uh, it's in Randall. <laughs> That's is Randall's town. I know because I was there three weeks ago. Yeah. So I Chinger, see. is it, it's Randall's town. That's what that area is called. Where you have Southwest Farmers Market. There's this long stretch that has the African stores. You know, so the Southwest Farmers Market in Maryland, Randall's town. That's that's this particular store showing now. Yeah, I think you have it written in this video. Yeah, it's it's faint, if you know what I mean. So it's southwest. Farmers Market in Maryland. Yes, Southwest Farmers Market. So you yeah. have it in their Houston and Maryland store. Yeah, so it's in their Houston, it's in their Dallas. It's also in Asso Rock. So there's Asso Rock store in Dallas. There is Asso Rock in Houston. It's there in Galland, Texas. It's in Austin, Texas, right? Um, so wherever you have, it's in Bisonet, it's in... <laughs> it's on Highway 6. <laughs> so for those uh, watching from Maryland, you can please check out the best and also i i posted the her website can people order from your website they actually can they can oh wonderful. they can yeah. in yes, the they us can. or anywhere um so the the uh, to be honest just within nigeria for now because you know within we don't nigeria. have yeah we don't have our own product all the products in the us are already bought if you get what i'm trying to say okay. right so it's not our product and we can't um we can't handle that fulfillment but this is something that before the end of the year we're going to have a full um us e-commerce store okay full before the end of the year by the third quarter by the end of the third quarter we'll have awesome. a full fully and fledged maybe get on amazon sunday you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean all of that will happen so we're we're by the third quarter by the fourth quarter another 20 foot container oh is getting into the US to, you know, to make this happen. So Amazon, our own personal e-commerce website and all that, definitely, yes. It, it takes time to get on Amazon. I just want you to be patient. So, and a viewer from Ghana, Kofi Azuma, is wondering when you will have your product in Ghana. Kofi, I don't have my product in Ghana yet, but it's quite interesting that I'm, I 
do visit Ghana quite a bit. I was actually in Ghana a few months ago. So Ghana is my runaway place. I go to, what's the name of that resort? So, but you know, when I need to work and clear my head, I just take a week off and I'm just, I just go to Accra, but I don't have my product in Ghana at the moment. You never know. You could be our, you know, buyer in Ghana. <laughs> and um, Elvis loves the way you talk about your fate boldly. So, <laughs> Thank you so much, Elvis. To be yeah. honest with you, I don't have, that's my only source. Like when I say that's my only source, that's my only source from Southwest London. So Sunday, we're also in the UK. So we have we have products in Addis. So Addis is in Manchester. Addis is um, somewhere in London. There are two stores in London, but Addis is in Manchester. Uh, there are two stores. In fact, um, another set of products just left on Monday. Um, the buyer, we'll see, we'll see UK, we'll see, we'll see foods. They just picked up their own boxes as well, you know, for their container that's living to the UK. So, um, Thank you, Sunday. You may want to check out our days or we'll see, we'll see um, for our products in the UK. Awesome. So, guys, please click on that link or copy it and put it in your... We're actually last... even in Canada, right? So <laughs> we're, we're selling also in Canada. Awesome. Yeah. Where can people find you in Canada? And then we sell in Australia as well. <laughs> Where in Canada can people find you? So, your I know that the store, I know that the store is in Edmonton. Edmonton, okay. But well, you yeah. don't know the name of the store. <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing. I'm just a pap seller, if you get what I'm trying to say. My focus is uh, producing quality pap and all that for people. But maybe I need to take this store locations. Can we find this on your website? Can we find locations um, on your website? So the foreign locations, no. That's the truth. Okay. The foreign locations, no. But... Um, because there's no reason to be honest there's no reason because what i've tried to do in this rebuilding phase is to take it one day at a time adiola don't forget that i had mentioned you know um how how the whole scaling thing how you know i mean that's how we built this global brand but this is all we rebuilding at a at a bigger scale at a larger scale i had 20 staff working with me i went back to rebuilding alone yeah. I'm trying to understand, are we, do we still have a business here? Are we a profitable business? Can we scale this profitably and all of that? So a few things are happening slower than before, if you get what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. simply because I'm focused on the bottom line than the, yeah. than the, uh, how would I put it, than the dressing side of things. So what would I call that in business? You know, so some people are interested in the flashy side of things and the visibilities and all that. Um, because I, because my vision, if you go on our website, says to build a sustainable world-class organization. I'm focused on building a business that outlives me that's not just about me. So at this time, I'm focused on building the foundation and a strong profitable base that can then carry this growth that is about to happen and explode if you get what i'm trying to say yeah. so that's where my eye is on at the moment okay so um a number of people have joined us but they are yet to turn on their devices they keep saying devices not connected please turn on your video camera so i can let you into the studio so fury god's enterprise as a mother elvis um bright if you're in stanley please, you should all turn on your video camera so I can let you in. I think I should mention for those who are uh, watching that you didn't just, you know, start making Akam the regular way that everybody makes it. First of all, you package your Akam and then you went into different flavors, right? Mm -hmm. you, you started thinking outside the box. Yeah, no, Ajola, let me tell you, you know, I say to people, right, uh, there's a framework I called the unlimited idea generation framework is problem solution and product so when i started selling pap i used to love custard and then i couldn't explain to people that i'm selling pap and i'm taking custard that was me thinking how do i create pap that non-pap lovers <laughs> and picky eaters would love that's how i came about the strawberry flavored pap and at that time we also had the vanilla flavored pap and those were the only two that I could see what's that oh my goodness okay so that's you know um 
we received these grains. <laughs> oh, we we're trying to sort the grains. Okay, so this was, this is sorghum and millet washing the grains. It was, we were discarding some boxes here. You can see what time we had this massive production going on. We needed to churn out a thousand boxes for a particular client and we, we had to do it within a deadline. I wouldn't leave the factory sometimes until midnight right and by 6 a.m i was back and between the factory and my home is an hour distance right so when we talk about dream and action is that you really need to <laughs> you really need to put in the work <laughs> yeah so i like to get my hands dirty and do the work <laughs> as it were so you were making pap but you like custard so you found a way to marry them yes so i had to find a way to to marry my love for whatever this thing is and guess what so i've gone on to find more interesting ways to take pap right so i have pap as per face so this morning even before i went to church that was my breakfast i practically would have pap every day now right not even just like the one i raised now right this is our ginger pop i know from the color so we have um color code so if you just raise any of our variants i can tell you what you're holding if it's the brown one is the one with soybean if it's the yellow one is the yellow compact if it's the orangey one is miss gray so i also did um tell um, us all the flavors <laughs> so we have the plain yellow we have the plain miss greens and the plain miss greens is sorghum and millet and uh, then we have the uh, miss greens with ginger which is this one so it's sorghum millet and ginger and of course it's not ginger flavor and then we have something with soybean because of course i'm thinking about protein you know for children and i know that also some people want protein in their meals but they're lactose intolerant so it's in thinking about people's problems that's how i then would create you know um this product so we have this the one with soybean and some people swear by that um then we have the strawberry flavored one which of course is my favorite and um, we have um the plain white one as well so those are the six flavors that we have currently in the market wow those are the six flavors. <laughs> that's that's wonderful i do have a say mota elvis and i will let him ask his question and real quick, Smart Study and Living says that this is very inspiring. And Peace Divine talk about how consistent you've been, like consistency has been. The fact that you still work till midnight. Oh, yes. You're, you're already a millionaire. You're still, you know, working. So, so Adjola, I, I, and you know, when you say you're already a millionaire, right? And the truth is that the business does generate nine figures in revenue. So we're not, right? But the, the, you know, what is the vision? So what is this million? If, you're, if you understand what I'm trying to say, we're talking about these dreams where, for example, my oldest daughter, my oldest child, who's my daughter, is 17 this year. She's got offers to um, university. No, well, nobody's going to ask you for how many, you need to pay those bills. Do you understand? And it's about, like Peace had said, consistency. It's about wealth creation. It's about keep growing. Even if you're Nigerian and you know the exchange rate, I'm waiting for the guy who's coming in to ask his question, right? So, you know. I so, just lost him. I don't know what happened. How to do the work. Dangote, who is the richest, but still does the work. I mean, I think that the one of the the... You know, I think one of the things or one of the myths and misnomers is people thinking that entrepreneurship means you're not working. You are not when you're an entrepreneur. You are not when you're an entrepreneur. Waka, Atlanta is coming. I was in Atlanta two weeks ago. How you can know, you in Atlanta? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Atlanta is coming. I promise you. I was in Atlanta two weeks ago and all of that. So I was in New Jersey. I was in Atlanta, Maryland and Houston. And all of this was you know just preparing because you must do the work you know it's about i hadn't i hadn't you know post covid gone to the us to understand the markets i need to go see things you know what i'm trying to say so um before the year runs out right you would have um the best pop in atlanta and if anything like i promised you that by the end of q3 you would have our e-commerce store. So you can just directly order from our, our store and it will be delivered to you. So maybe you want to follow my page on Instagram and so that when that happens, yeah, you know, when that happens, you can you would know when it happens. And um, yeah, that's- Please follow her place. on Instagram. I'm going to post her Instagram handle. Uh, it's basically her name on Instagram. 
Ijoma. You know what it is? Oh, Wait. I thought it was Manyaka underscore global. That's your handle. Oh, so okay. Her name and her handle, I just said them on Instagram. I'm going to post her Instagram handle. So, uh, Bernie, you're live. Can you please turn on your video camera and ask your question? You're also muted. Hi, Bernie. Please unmute yourself. Okay, while Bernie is working on his camera, let's have Ifyanyi Stanley. Ifyanyi, hi. Please tell us where you're calling from and what your question I'm is. Okay, I'm calling from Nigeria. Okay, hi. Thanks for joining us. Hi. So Good evening. Question? Good evening. Okay. My question is, uh, as an undergrad undergraduate who is come that will soon graduate from school what are like the basic principles that you should have in mind while starting up a small business so uh whether and okay so thank you first of all if you for your question right or thank you for joining and coming to ask a question so whether as an undergraduate thank or not you know, I think that if I rephrase your question, it would be that once you're starting or when you're starting out a business, what should you yes. what should you do? You must first of all be sure that there is a market for your product. That is the first thing. Um, ideas are worth a, a, a dime a dozen. Like people come up with ideas every day, but it's all about market viability. And what that just simply means, is there a market for my product? And then if there's a market for your product, you then begin to talk about positioning your product right before the right market. So in business, that is called the product market fit. So the first thing is, is there a market for my product? And then you want to test the market. So what I did, now we're talking about goods and the factory and all of those things, right? But the very first thing is that you okay. also want to test the market. That idea that you have, can somebody buy it? Get so, Try to sell to at least one person. I always will say the power of one. Try to sell to at least one person. And if one person can buy it, trust me, it then means that there is a scalability possibility with that business idea. Right. So don't look, look at the big picture, which is the dream. Start based on the big picture, but then focus on starting small. I used to just have the product in Mr. Big's takeaway pack, you know, in that, that's what I used to have. And I just had stickers that I was printing at the time for 10 Naira. And I had a small brown cooler that I would carry this thing in. I can, I still have that cooler with me over 10 years and I still have it. Right. And I have 12 of those things inside that cooler. You can then imagine that I would go to this retail store of mine where you've come in to buy your designer shoes or whatever it is you've come to buy, right? You're buying shoe for 100,000, 70,000, buying bag for 500,000 at the time. And I was more interested in getting you to buy my pap of 600 naira. So first things first is that is there a market for my product? Even though sometimes customers don't know that they even need your product. And you're the one that has to, you know, so it's called, in, in marketing, it is the fact that they are not aware that they need your solution because your products must be solving a problem. Your service must be solving a problem. So sometimes your potential customers or prospective customers, right, don't even know that they need your product. So that doesn't stop you. And why am I saying that? So imagine the electric car, for example, Prior to the electric car, we were all doing well with our fuel cars and diesel cars. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, but, you know, the very first one, which was Tesla by Elon Musk, is that he he created it and told us that we needed it. Yes. I don't know if I don't know if that answers your question, but this for me would be the very first thing, testing your idea and making sure that, you know, you're, you have a market for your product. If not, you would just you know, be chasing some dreams in futility. And at that time, you would have wasted money, resources, time, energy, and all of that before you find out that it's not working. Thank you so much, Lambie. <laughs> so, but you know, Lambie, Lambe, and, and, and I would, let me just even respond to it. I know it's a comment. You know, yes, I've spoken about my faith. 
And I've spoken as Christ as my source. And I make no apologies about it, right? So, but I can tell you something. I'm big on knowledge. You can see right behind me, this is just but one of my bookshelves. I have one here. I have, not, I have like books everywhere. I've signed up for courses. I've signed up for a program just to learn and understand and know. So you can never underestimate the power of personal development on this journey. It's not just about prayer and reading Bible. So <laughs> let me put that Thank you for there. saying that. So people learn not to just leave everything in God's no, hands. No, 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 no. Because even God said to us in the Bible, he said, come, let us reason together. He gave you brains for a reason. Do you understand? So it's just that I will subject my plans and ideas and thoughts to him, but it's not that he's the one really thinking for me. Absolutely not. Asemata, you are on mute. Hi, Asemata. Tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Please don't forget what she said just now. It's okay to pray and all that, but you have to put action to your prayers. She reads a lot. She just showed us her shelf. So knowledge is power. Knowledge is 95% and prayer is 5%. Oh, Nigerians don't like that. Oh, 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 oh boy. Anyway, <laughs> brother Asemota, tell us what your question is and where you're calling from. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm calling from Nigeria, so we're in the evening here. I don't know. I think you guys have been the afternoon over there in the US. I don't know. So good evening, Ma. Good evening, Adiola. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I'm really inspired by all you said, Ma. I mean, I'm so inspired. And um, I even want to start following up on you going forward because your story is so inspiring, especially to young entrepreneurs like us. For me, um, uh, I would like to, um, you know, I I'm in a stage in my business where uh, um, having difficulties, you know, uh, getting the necessary investment. I've been in this sector for 10 years, telecommunication. So, and uh, we, have a pro we, we have an app that was launched, and uh, we are trying to scale up. You know, it's really, really, really very, very challenging. Like you said, you said the easiest part in business is uh, coming up with the idea. So the, the, the difficult part is, you know, bringing it to fruition, making it real. For me, uh, I, you know, it's been a journey. So we don't talk about my own journey here. My question is, how do we, you know, um, as in, how do we now take this um, idea to a point where, you know, uh, it becomes this reality? What are the, you know, what, what are those things that we need to put in place apart from dreaming apart from planning what are other things that we can put in place to help bring this dream to reality okay so i'm going to also ask you a few questions so that i can answer correctly so this app that you've developed so it's fully developed okay. am i correct it should be developed yeah fantastic um how long now has, has it been fully developed a year now. Fantastic. In that one year, has anybody used the app? Yeah, people have used it. And people have used it. We have uh, a team of marketers trying to, you know, scale. But the major challenge we have is um, actually finance. That's our major, major no, challenge. So, so can I tell you something? Just answer. You, you know, sometimes yeah. we think it's finance that's the problem. But it, it may not be finance. It could because if the customers are willing to buy, to be honest, the finance will come. I can tell you that for free. Take that from somebody who who started from zero and someone who's rebuilding from zero. It goes back to yeah. the product and the market. Because for the market to buy is a marketing conversation. Now you've talked about the fact that you have a marketing team out there, da, 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 right? First, I don't know what the app is meant to do. But the question is this, who really is the customer? If you heard my conversation, I talked about rebuilding my business model. So I rebuilt my business model in a way that it was no longer about the stores. It was no longer about, I had to focus on cash flow. 
So that's why I'm asking you the questions I'm asking. Don't worry about finance because I want to know now, has anybody used the app and they've used this successfully in the last one year? Yes, people have been using the app. The, let me put it this way. Um, it's such that we have uh, the demand for products. We don't have the strength to, you know, to match the demand. So that's where finance is the so, challenge so, right now. For can, I tell you what, can I tell you what is happening, right? Because in starting okay. a scaling business, there's first a mindset shift that has to happen. So what is even okay. happening in this conversation is that no matter what I want to say, because you've convinced yourself that the problem is finance, you're not even able to answer any of my questions clearly or confidently so. Okay. The question then becomes, how would you be able to even market? Now, you know that your Adiola, Adiola does have, you know, people listening from across the world. And if I were you, and if your marketing message was clear enough to you, this would have been a chance to answer clearly in a way that you market your app. So you can see that I don't know you and I don't know your business. But I can tell you that you're struggling with clarity of your marketing message because you're not able to tell me anything clearly here now because you start to answer the question and then you still veer off to, oh, and the challenge is marketing. Because if you have a clear demand, um, there's a supply issue where, you're, where people are demanding, my goodness, that is a good problem to have. And if really and truly that is the problem you have, you can find finance. Because anybody would finance, because that demand would translate to cash and cash flow. But that okay. demand, how do you know? What is the data? What are you using to measure? I have this um, business, reinvent your business challenge that I currently teach. And the next one is coming in June, right? And this is not even me marketing it yet. But what I'm saying is this. If your marketing message is unclear, then the customers that don't even understand what you're selling, don't understand that they need what you're selling, how are you going to prove that there's a demand? Do you have anywhere where people are coming to that is making you say that there's a demand? And if I understand technology, because as much as I say that I'm, I sell pap, what I do is understand businesses and tell you the strategy behind any business, right? If you're talking about a technological business, it's a service, it's not a product. Well, what part of that service is is because if it's an app then it means it should be downloaded and used i guess would i be correct yes ma fantastic yes. so where do you collect the data that is showing that truly there is a there is demand now if there is demand and it's a service-based product it means that you would create the product once and people keep downloading it so what exactly is the issue that the finance would fix is the issue is the finance going to fix bug issues then that becomes a different kettle of fish so as if you ask me i would say to you please really go back to the drawing board and be clear on what your problem is forget money once you become very clear on it then you can pitch the business to anybody, including the customers, and they will buy and you will generate cash flow. And you can also link up with Ijeoma Udukwe and take some of her lessons, her classes. My brother, I'm sorry, we need to move on. There are so many people trying to ask questions. You have had thank you your so much. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. All right, good luck. Have a good night. We have thank next you. Sunday Ojela Ojela B. Please tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Have a good night. Hello. You need to stop watching. You have to look in the, maybe it's your phone or laptop. You have to look in that one and you need to mute the other one because it's echoing. So please mute it. While he's doing that, Michael Kayode Fabanwo says other people like Ogi. I don't like Ogi. My brother, this is why she has different flavors. Michael, welcome to the club. I didn't used to like Ogi, but right now I have my Ogi with raisins. Like my goodness, with granola. Yes. Are you kidding? Or with fruits. Find the best website and then see the nice ways. I actually had a pop tasting party. John is that where we had pop in different ways. <laughs> and you will start to love pop. If you understand the health benefits of fermented cereal on gut health, it will not be about what you like, but about the health benefits of Ogi, as it were. 
which is a fermented cereal. Okay, this Sunday. Is, so we're this is not your regular ogi. It has different flavors. You have to try them before you say you don't like ogi because it's okay, not the regular. Okay, Mr. Ogi. Sunday. All right, Sunday. Please tell us. Uh, what okay. You from it. Okay. Good. Good evening, Adiola. Good evening, Joma. My name is Sunday Adimala Jalabi. Calling, calling you from Southeast London. It's nice to be on this show, and then I want to appreciate Adiola for bringing all these resourceful, highly resourceful Nigerians to educate people, young people, you know, on um, how we can better our lives. And I've been, it's been very impressive. The last two guys. I didn't get I didn't get to follow the first one, though I later watched them. Uh, though I know Pastor Emmanuel before then, Lumide Emmanuel before then. But then I follow the question, please, Sunday. The question, okay. brother. Ask your question. Your time is gone. <laughs> yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, it's not mine is not more of a question, it's more of um the uh, input. And you have mentioned on those two areas that I will have that I've I wanted to say. One is reading culture the need for our people to read more. Then the other is over-dependence on miracles or prayers above the what your, your personal, um, your effort, your own ability, your effort, putting effort into what you want to be. And I want to end it by saying that one thing I've got to know now is success is deliberate. There must be deliberate effort from you to want to get to your goal. You may have the dreams, but once you are not deliberate about getting it, I mean, you're not going to get it. God bless you. And I agree with you, which is why I say that my teaching methodology is dream, act, and manifest. So that the bridge between your dream and the manifestation of your, of your dreams are the actions that you take. It, that are the actions that you take. That's actually the bridge right your dream is only like it acts as a destination it acts as where you're going because if you're also not going anywhere then anything will look like where you're going there'll be yeah. distractions and shiny objects right mm -hmm. but success is very deliberate and it's a lot of hard work to be honest with you you know if i told you that i came on this show now with splitting headache splitting and all i'm waiting for is to be done pop paracetamol, and then go and lie down and start the next day. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But yeah. I just shared what my faith is, but it is 95%. Now, the thing is this, right? With prayer, for me, in my own case, as a Christian, and, you know, is that, what does it really mean? I'm just, I believe in the power of God. I believe in the favor of God. That's my own belief. It doesn't stop my actions. It doesn't stop the fact that I have to get up and do the work. So what I also say is, you know, from dreams to goals to plans to action. So it's something I call DGPA when I'm teaching, right? So I, I, um, I have this challenge, and maybe I'll talk about it right now. And maybe Adola, you may help me to put, um, you may help me to put this. <laughs> this link you know on the screen and maybe thank you so much sunday for your input so i have this program that i teach and you know at the very beginning of this program of this show adiola talked about the fact that you don't you know you have to make things work out of your live experiences you have to you have to move away from whatever may have happened and that for me is this has happened i'm rebuilding how do i teach other people what to do and that's how i came up with the reinvent your business challenge where i'm teaching people so i'm not teaching them to pray <laughs> do you understand what your faith is your business if you're if you're a buddhist fine and good we're all on earth if you're a hindu fine and good that's beautiful i'm not here to convert anybody to my faith but i just want to teach the principles of business and i teach using my four my four s framework what is this four s framework you start a business you serve which is why you heard me tell somebody sell to one person so that's my framework of teaching you serve then you skill before you start soaring. There are things to do at these different phases of the business. 
Right. Thank you so much, um, Sunday. Um, Sunday. Yeah, good evening. Um, my name is BC Ojo, and I'm calling from Kent in the UK. I will first of all want to appreciate you and Adiola for the wonderful work you're doing. Um, my question is this. Do you have any step to become a distributor? That's the first one, probably maybe in Nigeria or in the UK. Oh, yes. We have wholesalers in Nigeria. So the only thing, we have wholesalers in Nigeria and we also have in the UK, which is what I was saying. I don't know that you know. Do you know Ades Foods in the UK? Do you know mm, Ades? No. Okay, no. so he sells our products in his stores. And then Wosi Wosi um, Foods also has just picked up their products. You know what I'm trying to say. So yes, we're very open to that. Please follow me on Instagram. Send me a DM at wanyakamo underscore global. And I would, um, okay. you know, tell you how we can go about that. Okay. All right. Does that answer Thank your you question? so much. Yeah, that's my question. Okay. So that's the kind of question I love. The ones that put money in my pocket. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, by the way. Really appreciate it. And please, and please, this is her Instagram handle. Uh, you can DM her right away on there. That's how I contacted her myself. Also, please don't forget what she said and what Sunday said as well, that success is not by accident. It doesn't just happen. You must have a plan. That's why we're doing this. Okay. The next person is Bawana. Bawana Haguziki, please tell us where you're calling from and um, what your question is. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon, ladies. How are y'all guys doing today? Good. Doing amazing. Y'all Yes, excuse me for um, pardoning in, in the Nigerian conversation. By the way, I'm, I'm calling from um, the Bahamas. So, you know, um, the sister was, when she was speaking, you know, she was just mentioning things that really resonated with me. And I'm curious to know um, what kind of personal development books she's actually reading. Also, the, the other question I, well, what I wanted also to say is when she was um, briefly speaking about the importance of taking action. Taking action is very important. And you, mean, you may not necessarily get it right the first time, but you also could tweak what you offer, whatever service that you might be offering to the general public. Always, you could always tweak it and make it better. But the important thing is getting things off of the ground, getting it out there to the marketplace, finding out where, where it's not working, finding out where it's working. But it's not enough with the theoretical stuff. You have to get it out there and get it into the marketplace and get it going, taking action. But I'm, like I say, I'm just curious to know um, what, what kind of books the sister is reading in terms of personal development. I'll, I'll just come, come off and listen. Okay. Um, can you tell me, is the B pronounced in your name? Is it silent? Could you call your name? Because I don't want to mispronounce your I'm name. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Buana Haguziki. No, just tell me the first one. Don't worry about the, <laughs> don't worry about oh, the last sorry. one. It's, it's Buana. Buana. Okay, fantastic, Buana. Um, so in terms of books, right, I read anything on mindset, mind. I think that's how I started. So I would read anything that has to, this was before now, right? I would read anything around financial mindset, mental, you know, maybe that's why I talked about the book by Napoleon Hill. Um, and I went on to start reading any business book, any. The most books I bought one time on my trip to the U.S. was 40 books, 40. And I read nine in a month, right? I, I really don't socialize so much. My whole life is around my business. So it is more around category. And then I love to read um, success stories, you know, like the the not the pure autobiographies, but you know, the ones that's telling me how did they navigate? What happened? So books like Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Yes, 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 yes. Oh I know Shoe Dog. Yeah. <laughs> like I couldn't leave. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I couldn't yes, yes. Because I'm thinking, you know, you remember the risks he was taking? Yes, you remember? yes, so, yes. There's also another book, Um, uh, the guy who made Netflix. He wrote a book, uh, I, I, I can't one, remember the exact name of it. Then I read That's the one the name of a guy. Do you understand? So I'll read all kinds, just anything that anything that makes sense, you know, in terms of starting and building a business. I'm not really even reading as much now, to be honest. So sometimes in life, there are seasons. So I read so much for so many years. I read so much that, and you talked about it not being theoretical. So I'm learning on the job. 
before my business went belly up, I had an account because I believed so much in accounting, you know, or the numbers or data. I'm a data person. Right. And that's why I was asking the author brother, what data do you have to show these things, these conversations I'm having here? I can show my data. I can show the growth. I can show what I'm saying. I show all workings. I'm not, you know what I'm trying to say? So I, 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 I would read any of those kind of books prior to now, but I can tell you something. I found that they were not, they may not be making sense at the time. So I have some books that I've had to reread and reread and then, you know, I've underlined because it's now it's making sense. And it, I know it's resonating with you, Buana, with the way you're smiling and laughing. And guess what? This is not a Nigerian conversation. This is a global conversation, right? Because even all of these things you hear me talking about my product and the fact that, oh, I was in this state in, in the U.S. and all is because I'm looking to expand globally. And all I've done is register the business in the U.S. right now. So right now, as I speak with you, we have Bubes Foods, which is in Nigeria, and we have Bubes Foods LLC in the US. So when you hear me say things like we're going to have our fully functional e-commerce website, I'm not just talking. It's that I'm taking the action. Take action, if yes. And, 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 it's, and it's beautiful, go ahead, sister. And it's beautiful that you, uh, you are thinking globally. We, we are global people, and we need to start okay. thinking globally. Come out of the, the boxes of Nigeria and the Bahamas and America. We are <laughs> global. We're global. So can I tell you something? If you looked even in the packaging, right, what I've done now, as I speak now, they are producing our new packaging materials that will then be exported. What I've gone on to do is, I mean, PAP is a local name, if you get what I'm trying to say. So if you saw this product on the shelf, it's not going to appeal to you. But we have to start from somewhere. We have to start from the known to the unknown. So what we've done now is that we've recreated. When you see it, it's exactly like this, the new packaging. But there are a few things. Things like, what is pap really? So when you hear me now say that pap is a fermented grain cereal porridge, no, I wasn't just talking. We've gone ahead to put that on the packaging. So that when someone like Bona sees the product and doesn't know what pap is, he can tell that this is actually a grain cereal porridge. Do you understand? And sorghum is global. Millet is global. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, 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 yes. Quant, quant, just, just about the product. Yes, and just as you just as you sell this this product, you know, we, cornflakes is global. You know, so si since people eat cereal in the morning, why not eat your? Why not eat just? <laughs> so you guys do not listen. Find me on Instagram. I like you already. This is what I'm talking about. My, you know what I'm trying to say. What happens when you're clear on what you're saying is that people start to see the vision. You know, when you're talking and then you say, can you see? Or, oh, now I see, right? It's not the, what is happening is that the more I'm speaking and speaking clearly, you didn't know the product, right? But you've understood what the product is. You've understood that, wait a minute, this is just a regular breakfast cereal, like your conflicts. And really, that's how I'm thinking. I'm saying to myself, listen, we're here in Nigeria, and we all eat hummus for a crying out loud. That is Mediterranean dish. So however they came and sold us hummus, we want to take pap and sell it to the world so that people like Buana will be drinking pap. Do you understand? So we have to, you know, take have a global outlook to whatever it is that you're doing. The world has become a global village. So that, that that dream of how do I put this in the hands of 1 million people? No, I'm not. I didn't say in the hands of 1 million Nigerians. I said in the hands of 1 million people. And guess what? Buana is one of that. If well, you I, like I say, I, yeah, absolutely. And I, I will I will look you up on um, Instagram, in, in Dukwe, in Dukwe. I will look yes. you up and I, I will, you know, try to make links with you. you know, so right yes, 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 yes. All right, guys. Ladies, have a great day. Thank you so much. You Anna. too. Thank you so much for your question. Um, please and please, someone wanted the last caller to know that there is Addis thank in you, Charlton okay. and Thimpsley. Yes, please. Thank you so much. That's thank for the so first hour. Yes, please. Asking where to find your product. Uh, Bright, I just let you in the studio. Okay. Uh, please tell us where you're okay. calling from and what your question is. If anybody else would like to join, I still have the link up, but uh, finding out that my guest has headache makes me... No, 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 no. Adjola, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm here. I don't want us to stress <laughs> you. No, no, no. Trust me. Listen, okay. the thing is this. You're not... You're not taking me out of my comfort zone. I can talk business for 
24 hours non-stop. It's something I'm passionate about. I'm so passionate about starting and scaling your business that I'm good. Do you understand? I think all I was trying to say was irrespective, you know, and that's part of what happens with entrepreneurship, irrespective of how you feel, you get up. And that's why I made sure I had my glass of water. <laughs> if you get what I think, so that. No, 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 no. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Trust me. <laughs> All right. Right. Please tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm calling from Ghana, actually. And I see you're a very busy person. And I just want to know how you manage your time. Because that's one of the biggest problems I'm facing as a person. Okay, that's your biggest. Okay, so your question now is more a productivity question, right? And the way I'm able to manage my time, it still goes back to what are your dreams. So you know when Adjola was talking, she talked about vision board. Now, when I teach in the Reinvent Your Business Challenge, I teach something on day two, which I call beyond the vision board. So people have, you know, all these lofty things on their vision board that is not in alignment with what who they truly are. So you start to chase things that don't make sense, things that are, you know, defined by someone else for you. If you get what I'm trying to say, you begin to chase people's metrics for success. So when I say to people to create their dream lives, which is what I do in the one of the challenge is what is success what does it really mean to you listen as much as i want you know to drive nice cars and have great vacations to be honest with you i really don't care about them as much as i care about my family so time with my family is important to me because i have to make sure that i'm intentionally raising wholesome children if that makes sense right so i map out the things that are important to me and then i allocate there is really nothing called um, work-life balance because in science, you're taught that balance is, you know, everything is equal. So imagine that you have a hundred and you divide into two. So, you know, work will take 50 and life will take 50, right? But what it is, is that you yourself, Bright, have, you have to identify what is important to you. If you understand what is important to you, then you begin to align and link all your activities around it and i'll explain now as much as i say that my business is important to me the truth is this the reason i'm building my business is to be able to fund my dream life so i'm not just building a business for the sake of building a business i'm not doing it to impress anybody else i'm doing it because i believe that my business can be profitable enough and you can see that this episode is titled how to start and scale your business to profit and fund your dream life so for me, is what is that dream life? So for me, my children's education is important to me. So I want to build my business in a way that it can fund up my children's education. The fact that my kids will not like the basics is important to me, right? So it means that if I'm then running this business and not having time for these things, other things that are important to me. So I, I may not always be present because I'm at work, right? But what I then would do is, Every night, every Friday night, I then created what I call movie night with my children. So it's bonding time for us. So it's little things like that. It's not the quantity, but it's the quality. And when my children are talking to me, and I'm talking about my children because they are very important to me. <laughs> so it's God, it's my family, then my business, really and truly. So my business and my relationship. I find a way, my children can run my business if I drop dead today. And what do I mean? My children understand everything. Because they understand, you will see my last child, who is 11, would come to say to me on a day I'm not showing up life, mommy, you haven't shown up life today. Mommy, you haven't shown up life to me today. You get what I'm trying to say? So when mommy is busy, they understand and they understand why. Even for me to show up life today, in the car on our way from church, I said to them, oh, mommy is going to be showing up at X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And I said to my daughter, do you have data on your phone? Okay, check her out on YouTube. Check out Adiola Fire. You know what I'm trying to say? You would never really have a balance, but you will have work-life integration. So it goes back to the framework I talked about, which is dreams. <laughs> Crystal Bell. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So Christabel. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Christabel is another, you know, amazing mad lady there in the US doing her thing. Yeah. So you have to find out what is important to you and begin to integrate it into your work life. So you have to take your dreams and okay, so I'll ask you a question and we'll just do a simple um 
live demonstration, if that's okay. What is this yeah. productivity? What exactly in terms of managing your time are you struggling with? Let me not respond generally. Let me, let me do a bit of coaching right here. Okay. I didn't get the question right. If you could come. My question is this. What exactly, you know, are you trying to make time for that you're not making enough time for? Okay. So I see that I'm able to draw plans for the day, for the week, for the month. And then I follow it for a period of time. And then something comes up to inter interrupt the plan. And then I just I ignore it order. altogether. Yeah. Oh, no. So what it is, is you started, you, you, you're drawing up your plans more from an execution point of view than from a vision and dreaming point of view. Okay. Do you understand? And what it means is that how about you take a 10 year view? It's not clear, understood. How about you take a three year view? You bring it down to one year and you're saying to yourself, this is what I want to achieve in one year. Because truth be told, you would have your down times. You will have those down moments. But if your dream, and well, maybe this is where I'll say you need to sign up for the reinvent your business challenge and trust me. So what I'm saying to you now is what I teach uh, in day four. You take your 10-year plan. So I'm not just talking. You take your 10-year vision. It's not very clear, but you have an idea of, of what it is that you're trying to achieve. Let me tell you. I, I'm clear that I want to build a business that has 40 to 45% gross profit margin, 10 to 15% net profit margin. I know exactly the number of people that I say I want to reach. I know those numbers. Then I bring it down to three years. Then I bring it down to one year. Is my one-year plan or one-year goal or target that I then bring into 90 days. So even your publicly listed companies would have their financial statements unaudited, you know, um, revealed every 90 days, every quarter. So every business person is called a 90 day cycle. So every business person is quarter one, two, three, and four. So even when you heard me talking about when the container will reach the US, I'm talking in quarters. I didn't talk about months. I didn't talk about days. So what happens is that between January and March, even when I have um, those down moments, I'm able to still pick up because I gave myself the wiggle room for those things. And another challenge is that most visionaries, because you're a visionary, you pack on too much. So it's like you have 100 goals to achieve in a year. How about you just bring those goals that of what you want to achieve in a year to as little as seven? Not more than seven. We always think that it is better to multitask. Meanwhile, it is better to focus on one. It is the power of focus. Of doing one thing and doing it well. So the reason you fall off the wagon and you're not able to go back is that you're doing one million gazillion things at the same time. So when you fall off the wagon, you really don't even know which string to pull again. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, Bright, or if this is actually your situation. A lot. A lot. A lot. So if you then would bring your goal I'm getting... to seven in a whole year, you'll find out that in a quarter, really and truly, you are chasing two things, two but it will be two things that will move the needle towards towards okay. achieving your dream. That's why it has to first start from your dream into your goals, into your plans, into your actions. So your 90 days, you now take it and look at weekly and look at daily, and then you rock it from there. There are days that honestly, it drama doesn't go to work. But the thing is, my brain will just be processing the things that needs to process. You know, and then when I when it's time to execute, I execute and it's looking like, oh, she did this. If we weren't here now and I'm talking about the fact that we registered Boobest Foods and on da, da 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 in preparation for all these, you know, things that sound like dreams that we have about the e-commerce thing, about, you know, how we want to grow the business. The only thing that will happen is that people will then see it happen at the time and not understand that months before I started the groundwork. But it will materialize whenever it materializes. Okay. Don't take on more than you can handle. Okay, thank, thank you very you much. So the much. last one. Um, you are very busy, but how do you make time to read? To read? Yeah. Because reading is part of productivity. So okay. it, what you call is your perspective. If you look at it as a chore, if you look at it like, oh, I'm reading because I have to read, then that's 
you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so in growing a business or in terms of how badly you want this thing, you are the one that will decide how far you want to go. I can't decide for you. So if that is the case, it means that you will cut out a lot of things. You will keep your circle small. You will keep your socializing very minimal. If you socialize it's strategic or you want to relax, I'm not saying you don't relax, don't forget. Of course you have to relax, right? But I'm just saying that if you look at it as I'm investing in myself. Listen, I'm here now and I don't know the questions that anybody's going to throw at me. But I don't know that there's any question that anybody has thrown at me that I haven't been able to answer because of um, residue of residual knowledge, if you get what I'm trying to say. And you can see that what I did for you right now is life coaching. So people pay <laughs> to get me to coach them for an hour, if you get what I'm trying to say, right? But what I'm yeah. saying is, if you understand that knowledge is power and then the application of knowledge really is not just the knowledge in itself because i see books at your back and i'm seeing is that is that steve r covey book at your back do you is that what i'm seeing at your back okay so if you're reading and then you're looking at it like i'm improving myself i'm developing myself i want to know more then i don't know maybe maybe i'm saying it because it comes easy to me reading comes very easy to me I'd rather read than do anything else. You have to basically oh, see you. reading. You have to see reading as one of the things you have to do to succeed, mm-hmm. and then you won't see it as work. You will see it as you are investing. Mm-hmm. It's like you are. You have whoever wrote that book as a coach. It's like you are spending time with. Yes, I should talking about La- Napoleon Hill, the rich and grow. The think think and grow. And grow, grow rich. That's like you spending time with the author whenever you're reading his book. So if you have that opportunity, you won't see it as waste of time or, you, you know, if you have the opportunity to meet with the author, it would be a, a huge honor, I think. It's like picking the, he's picking the author's brain on, on, on that yeah. topic. Really, yeah. that's what it is. That's like cliche. All right. Thank you so much for your questions, Bright. Mm-hmm. They were really helpful. And thanks for joining us from Ghana. Have a good evening. Um, good evening. Yeah, so real quick, just based off of the question that he asked, by the way, if there's anybody else that would like to join us in the studio, I just went over everybody that was in the studio, which is great. We've been on for one and a half hours. I can't even believe it's been that long. If anybody else would like to join us in the studio, uh, please, I've been posting the link. But real quick, a number of people have been asking about your library and about your coaching uh, services as well. Um, Someone was asking for three books on mindset and how to register for, I believe they are trying to talk about your coaching. The challenge. challenge. Okay, so books on mindset. Someone was asking for five books. uh, All about mind development. Yeah, let me see what I would find because I don't have like, recommendations top of mind but let me just see what i'll find my goodness <laughs> it, it's funny because the ones i have here are not even the ones that i've read read if you get what i mean i've read them i don't have particular recommendations to be honest with you i just read everything you know so i don't mention the couple since we started so it will be think and grow rich right it will be think and grow rich in terms of mindset it would be and, and I think even that one is more because it's popular. Not necessarily that that's the one that had the most impact on me. So if I've read um, things like The Millionaire Mind, Millionaire Mindset, you know, and these are books I read, my goodness, I'm talking 2013, even before that, you know. So see, I have all kinds of <laughs> that you don't want to know. See, I have all kinds of books, my goodness, all kinds, all kinds. See, okay, you can see this one now. It's a Christian book. I've, I have had this book since 2004. This is, what now? This is almost 20 years. You, you see what I'm saying? I don't know what my, this is 23rd of June, 2004. If you can see, that's how long I've had this particular one. So I don't have, you know, particular, I just read. I just love to read. <laughs> You know, I'll read everything. Okay. This is a Steve Harvey book, Jump. You know, 
So I just read everything. You can see these ones are not even in the library. This was bought in 2010. You know, so for, for the person asking for three books, at least three of the books that you've mentioned today, Think and Grow Rich, Millionaire Mindset. Millionaire Mindset, yes. Sure. And then the Phil Knight book, it's a business, it would it will challenge you. Yes, the shoe dog by Phil Knight. See, even this one was 2009, Adiola. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not things I'm doing for today. So even for beyond books, right? In 2000 and 2014, I flew from here to DC. It was 2014. To attend a two-day seminar that I paid $2,000 for. I didn't say it was a coaching program. On communication strategy. From here to Washington, $2,000. The same year, I went on to do um, oh. intensive media relations in the UK. And it was 2,500 pounds, 2014. Because, you know, we think that these things, you know, just happen, you know, like you just stumble on it. 2014, I went to do that course. So it was five days, 2,500 pounds. By 2016, I went back to the UK because at that time, business had set off faction. I'm looking at this business and I'm saying, this doesn't just look like business. It, it sounds more like a project. I mean, so that's how I am, right? And I'm thinking, oh, so this sounds like a project management conversation going on here. And it's not like now where, you know, you have a lot of things happening around and, you know, with social media, you can see them. And I got on the plane and I went to the UK to, you know, do a one week program on Prince 2 the beginner for project management, came back and I did the owner manager program in Lagos Business School. So I think I just, I just love knowledge. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm I believe glad. in the power of it. Man. I'm glad that you talked about that because the next question that I'm going to take, I think it's very important for people to know uh, more about your background actually, because people need to know that you you went to university of calabar that you you do have a degree what did you study when you were at the university <laughs> because okay so my background mm -hmm. go ahead please because what please because before i take the next question by unsung and tony people need to know that what's the most important thing is using what you have because that's what you did. Regardless of what you studied, you mm -hmm. used what you have. There's you, mm -hmm. people, you always have something. I just want people to know that you always have something because Usang Antonia is asking, how do you start with limited options and very limited experience in the niche and business? Tell us what you studied, which has nothing to do with the fact that today you are making Ogi you used what you have. It doesn't mean you can't do something with what you studied, but the fact that people, you always have something, people mm -hmm. need to know, no matter how limited they think it is, you always have something that you can turn around. Okay, so of course I went to University of Calabar and I went in to study medicine and surgery. And I was in medicine and surgery for four years Yep, studying to be a medical doctor. So all my friends and classmates and colleagues are consultant medical doctors, yes. <laughs> but then, I, you know, by my second year, I'm like, what are these guys talking about here? Can somebody put me in business school? That was where I, I knew, you know, that no, 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 no. This thing you people are talking about is not continuing for me, right? And then I flunked my second MB the first time, the three subjects, anatomy, biochemistry, and physiology. I went back the second time, thrust mothers. My mother said, Ichoma, you know you can do it. Just put your head down. Ichoma that was already doing business as a student, and my parents not knowing. So an undergraduate asked me a question, right? I actually started doing business as a student, and I did everything. Well, when I say everything, I sold Mary Kay products at the time. I sold... I, I made um, damask set of shoes and bags and I was selling them at the time. What else did I do? I sold gold jewelry. I went to Senegal as an undergraduate. Yes, you heard me. I went to Senegal. I was selling Senegalese at the time. 
you know so but then i graduated with a bsc in human physiology because by the time i was ready to um leave medical school to business college they then tell, told me that i must graduate graduate from uh, medical school so i picked the one i felt you know what i'll do this and move on <laughs> so yes i'm a graduate of bsc of um, human physiology from the university of calabar so i'm a great malabarist for those of us who are in nigeria <laughs> so i want to see um, is that his name the question then i can so that i can answer yeah completely. so but then you used what you have right um the yes, yes. You have limited options so the thing is this this is still song um this is still a mindset conversation because the question is this you know i wish he could come i wish he could join in the studio if you get what i'm trying to say and i'll show him that what he's calling limited is not limited he's the one seeing it as limited if you say you can succeed you can if you say you can't you can't that's okay and you're both right mm. so the the limited options how far can you see and maybe I'll bring the scripture in now, right? Even when God was taking to, talking to Abraham, who we call the father of faith in the Christian faith, because Abraham was in a place that he would call limited option, <laughs> right? And that limited option was that he was married by himself and his wife. They didn't have children yet. It was what the Bible says, well stricken in age. So he was limited by every limitation possible, right? So God had to take him out of his comfort zone out of his limited option to say, what do you see? And you know, the Bible would also say to you, despise not the days of your little beginning. So you are the one calling this thing limited. And that's what I'm saying. I wish you could come on life and would have done some life coaching and you will see that, no, as far as you can see is how big, is how big your idea is. My idea can, could have died with me you know, at the very beginning, if that's how I saw it. But I'm telling you today, if you like come back 10 years from now, say that I said, quote me anywhere, that I say that we haven't started yet. And it's not me being humble. It's not me. It's that the things that we have lined up to do, we haven't done them. So 10 years from now, we'll still be pushing to and inching towards achieving the dream and the goals, you know? So uh, could you put his question? That was the first part, which is limited options. And I don't know that it's limited. And very limited experience. So in the niche. So um, how do you start? You start with what? Start with that limited options, which was what Buana was saying, right? You start with the limited options and then the limit, but with a limitless mindset. Remember that in this conversation, I talked about a limitless wealth creation mindset. You want to be able to look at this thing and keep asking yourself, because what is entrepreneurship? It's curiosity, asking questions that are just not normally asked. That's what is entrepreneurship. That you're looking at this water and asking yourself, how would this multiply? How can I, you know, transform this water in a way that it never stops? That's what it is. How do I take my limited option and keep, listen, and I will still talk, talk scripture. My Bible, uh, my business really started on the back of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. And it says, what do you have in your hands that you can sell? And the woman in that scripture said, I have only, just like a song has said, I have limited option. I have only a tiny bit of oil that I would eat and I have my children that's it that's the end but you know the beauty of that story look at it as story don't worry about oh god wants uh -uh. don't worry about it but just look at the story part of it right the beauty of that story is the fact that that woman took her limited option and turned it into generational wealth and why do i say it's generational wealth because she kept pouring that oil her sons were helping her in that business so it turned from a little oil to family business, her and her sons were feeding off of that oil because they were selling, right? And then I want to believe that when her children or her sons will then get married and start their own families, because they also understood this thing about, you know, wealth creation, they were going to continue. So the woman's limited option became a generational wealth creation tool. How do you see that thing in your hands? I see 
Bubes pop, and I see pop. To be honest, I see pop as a meal that can be on every table, and that's what you heard me say to Buana. If we're here in Nigeria or anywhere else in the world, I've visited the largest hummus making factory. It's somewhere in Massachusetts, right? And this Mediterranean meal is on every. You know, you go and they, they serve you hummus, the dip, right? You pay a couple of dollars for the dip. <laughs> so please tell me why you can't we can't do something like that with with our local meal it's what you're thinking and what you see smart study mm -hmm. and leaving thank you so much it's, it's the power of personal development huh? <laughs> i'm you getting so much. My and doing the work and Adiola, sorry i don't know how many minutes we have but someone asked about the challenge and that's important to me because i'm a businesswoman true and true right and just like I was saying to, I think it was Bright, or no, I don't remember, it wasn't Bright, the other guy that was saying, you have the world stage with Adola. You have a stage and a platform. You didn't talk about what your app does. You didn't talk about, this was a free marketing platform. Do you understand? And that's the challenge. But we, because the mind is telling him that the problem is finance, he didn't see the opportunity. Even so after you said it, he didn't see it. It's okay. <laughs> even a song who thinks limited option is a mindset conversation. And that's why I always will start with the mind. What are you thinking? What's going on on the inside? So what I'm saying in essence is this is my opportunity to sell my program. You know, some people will say, oh, you know, you don't want to sound salesy. And I'm thinking, says who? Business is about buying and selling. Like I've got value to sell. I'm going to sell it. You know, like they'll say, shoot your shot. Do you understand? So I have this program that, you know, that I run. And the one it's, I did it in May. It was phenomenal. I had a client, one of the clients who she lives there in the UK and she has a business running. And they won because we have general admission, which is $97. And then we have the VIP, which is the life coaching. You see like what I did with the Ghanaian guy. You understand where I'm answering questions. To talk to me one on one for an hour is five thousand dollars, non negotiable, and I don't have the time. And I don't have the time, Adola. And I'm not talking about as far back as 2020. I had fifteen thousand dollar clients, ten thousand dollar clients paid. I'm not saying what I want to be doing. I'm telling you what I do with Live to Limitless Global. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because you come to me, I would give you a million, a, a framework and a roadmap that would clearly generate you a million dollars, period. If I don't give you that, I refund you your whole money. Clear roadmap. I know my onions, but that's not the conversation. So I don't have the time because my dream is clear that I want to build and generate $50 million in annual revenue for Bluebest Foods. So it is not the fact that you want to pay me $5,000 an hour. That's the thing. Is that that one hour I'm giving to you, if I put it in my business, I'm working towards my $50 million annual revenue. That's my own vision. And is that clear, right? Thank you, Buana. I love Buana. Like, I think I'm going to come to the Bahamas just to find you. You'll never know. My time is because you know what? That money you think you want to pay me, I can make it over and over, but I can't. I, my time is irredeemable. It's gone, it's gone, right? So I then put together this challenge, the Reinvent Your Business Challenge, where I'm then teaching how to go from zero to profits with what I call the VPC model. It still stands, starts with vision, profitability, and cash flow. So this client, you know, who lives in the UK and has her business running, day one of the coaching program, because she was in VIP, she found out that over a period and the small math that we did, right she was losing about 125,000 pounds over a period which could be more now the question is this she paid 297 dollars to find that out and that same day within 24 hours she went to tweak that in her business that transformation for me is phenomenal i have someone on your page today who also sells pop by the way i saw her comment where she was saying that Oh, that I can't remember her, but as far back as 2017, I helped her to find her purpose. And I just said to myself, eat your mouth well done. I have clients, when you see someone like Christabel come and say, this is it, Joma's jam. I've never met her, but she knows what she's saying. Because she, before now, she would not miss any of my live sessions on Instagram. 
So the challenge, the next one is holding June the 12th to 16th. But if you sign up today you have with the code RYBC10, you have a 10% savings. Whether it's the general admission. So the let's start with the let's start with the website. Now I'm going to talk calmly and not yeah, as I was just going to say tell us how people can sign up for your coaching. Yes, so and that you can put that. Also, you've you've written some books. Tell us some of your books as well, so that people can and how they can get they can get it. So they are all on the website, right? So the it's website? Uh, the website is leap to limitless.com. So it's L E A P two number two limitless. So you see, I believe really in the power of limitless mind. So so much that my business is called Leap to Limitless Global. So it's leap to limitless.com. However, the one my focus for today is forward slash <laughs> ryb challenge that's my focus and that's the one because that will then lead them to other things you know uh, into right. my email yeah. list uh, you know they begin to get emails from me you know join my newsletter and all that so that's the one that would make the most today because also in sales you want to focus on selling one so i, I may want to be selling different programs but no there's no need let's focus on one and the power of focus what I each is what I do. So leap to when, they, um, when they click that link, the first one without the RYB challenge, they will see all the books that you they will see. It, it takes them to the entire website, if you get what I'm trying to say. But okay. then this takes them and brings them even into my email list where they then would be getting whatever newsletters and information and emails that are mentally stimulating. You know, I do send emails every week. Sometimes when I'm really in the flow, I can send emails daily around business and, and mindset. The discount and code, the discount code is RYBC. The discount code RYBC10. One zero. Valid for short time. And then the spots for the challenge is limited because I want to make sure that I'm able to coach and coach properly. So it's more like a first and first come, first serve basis. Okay, so I just uh, posted that. Visit leapfantastic.com forward slash how I be challenge. Today you do get a discount yes. if you sign up today, and it is RYBC10. So fantastic. And this will be the last one because it happens over five days so it's five days of me tuning in and trying to help people to start and scale their businesses and the beauty of the vip admission is that you get life coaching i mean so it's five thousand dollars an hour but for 297 you have me for five hours to ask me any business question direct to your business marketing branding anything did you just <laughs> go from five thousand to 297 <laughs> because it's a group <laughs> and I don't want to take anybody one on one, even if it's for okay, maybe for a hundred thousand dollars, I can consider. <laughs> Please write you those down because once the show is over, the link will disappear. But please, if you're interested, write it down www.leaptolimitless.com. If you just go to leaptolimitless.com, you see all her books. But forward slash RYBC challenge will take you to her next coaching. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting tired myself. <laughs> oh, it's two hours. And the Thanks. link is on my Instagram bio as well. And you can send me a DM. I'm more than happy to serve and sell my product. <laughs> so they would get the link from me. If they missed it, they can just send me a DM. All I just need to do is copy and paste and keep it moving. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, and you also do podcasts and um, you do a My lot YouTube channel. Yes, <laughs> you have your own YouTube channel as well. Uh, you have a you have like journals and books. Your dream, your seed. Your dream, your seed. Yes. Yeah. yes. So I just want to make sure that I just want to make sure that people check you out. Oh, why am I getting tired? Anyway, we've come to the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> sorry 
we've come to the end of your show, of the show thank you so much for making time despite the headache i honestly really really appreciate this um for the last two hours and i just want you to know you have inspired a lot of people today a number of things that we learn from you is that you're never without a seed to sow to you know you're never without something that could be turned around uh because you turned ogi around and now there are different flavors and thank you so much for teaching us that you keep working even when money starts coming in and, and so on, you're still working so hard. And for sharing some of the books that you read, you library with us about our mindset. That's the most important thing. Um, I just want you to have the floor one last time if there's anything else you'd like to say, and then that will be the end of the show. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, someone was asking the email if they want to be a distributor. Uh, how do they contact you? Should they DM you on Instagram? See, my DM, you know, at least I go there twice a day. So I would see if they send me a DM. If they do send me a DM. Um, thank you so much, Adiola. You need to you need to go and rest and you know that you need you are such a strong woman and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I've talked about my headache, you know, and that is actually you know, nothing compared to how you feel yourself, right? So you're a true definition of a strong, strong, strong woman. Thank, um, you. thank you for having me. Thank you to everyone who's joined, who stayed. You know, it's one thing to join in. It's another thing. Imagine that I was here all by myself. It wouldn't have been fun. So thank you to everybody who made a comment, who asked a question, who joined the studio live. My parting words would just be, keep moving. It's not going to be easy. I wish I can, you know, prophesy. You know what I'm trying to say. I tell you, oh, it's going to be very easy. No, um, this road is filled with thorns. But if you can dream it and believe in your dream and act on your dreams, I can tell you that you would manifest it. It's only but a matter of time. Just start with your limited options, as you may call it, and you will be amazed and shocked. That what you think is limited experience in your niche is because you haven't started acting on those limited options. The moment you start to act on the limited options, that limited experience will become limitless. You can see that from my library, I have books as far back as 2004. That's not today. That's almost 20 years of working on myself and working on my knowledge and, you know, my and trying to build my capacity. And of course, there's no way I'm going to be saying goodnight without saying, please do check out and sign up for the challenge. Find me on Instagram and let's keep the conversation going. I do show up live every now and again on Instagram just to just, I'm very playful. This is me. There's no other sites to me, right? And then forget about the millionaire. We're all trying to sell our products and services. My name remains E. German Dupree, CEO of Bewest Foods and Business Growth Strategist at Lead to Limitless Global. Thank you. All right, I love the best for last. Happy belated birthday, right? Your birthday was like a week ago or so. So <laughs> happy birthday, so, so Thank proud you. of you. Thank you so much for joining us. And someday we'll meet life and that it, yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Bye.